So the bankable population is Myanmar is less than 30%. It's about only 26% of us are bank. Less than 2% of the population in Myanmar has a credit card. That's quite tricky when you're a travel e-commerce company trying to sell flights and bus tickets on a website. In our very early days, most of our transactions were being done in person with cash. Sometimes we would have to send a car to go pick up cash. And we did everything to convert a transaction. And it's been a quite fascinating journey getting us from 18 months ago where we were primarily cash-based to mobile web and then to native mobile and trying to essentially become a fintech-focused startup. I think in, in general, the more nascent uh, you, you are in an emerging economy, the more you really have to double down on uh, fintech infrastructure. Yeah, definitely. The fintech is the anchor of Myanmar to push the digital age. Fintech service like a mobile payment network with the foundation of the other digital service to scale the reach more the customer to without people having to go to the physical branch to the retail outlet. So this will encourage the new business to emerge the power the next wave to grow the Myanmar economy. So all the financial services uh, need to build today is like mobile fast generation. With Myanmar having 90% smartphone penetration, so the country has a huge opportunity to leverage with this and they can bid for the fintech product and that connect to the consumer to the more digital services. One of the trigger point that we need to see rapid growth is, is fintech and financial inclusions. So we have experienced a crazy growth in a mobile internet. But um, as everybody know, for, 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 for the whole e-commerce, digital ecosystem to grow, we, don't, we, we need not just internet, right? We need, we need a free flow of money. These two years, we have seen a huge, um, a huge growth and maturity of these uh, financial uh, mobile wallets in Myanmar. Consumers were also more ready to embrace them. Starting from traditional uh, banking, where everybody is using bank book and calling, you'd be surprised that you know the number, the most call that a bank gets every day is actually people calling to ask about their balance. Right? People are worried that their money will just disappear. So it's very normal that Burmese consumer will call every month. Some people even call weekly to say, "How much money I have in my bank?" From there, they move onwards to mobile banking, where the social media was growing. You know, with mobile internet, mobile banking was catching up because banks were really trying to push everything digital. And of course, you, everybody knows the limitation of mobile banking, right? Mobile banking, you have to have a bank account. So, you know, in order to achieve, to catch, to close the gap between mobile penetrations and banks, a mobile wallet is really the key, right? So the last one, two years, everybody, right? Financial Institute, Telcos, for example, KBZ Pay, Wave Pay, you know, and CB Pay, is really trying to push consumer to onboard into mobile wallet. KBZ Pay is one of the first and strongest examples of the local startup working with many fintech. Our platform, we support the startup and SME who are fast digitizing the dancer. So we have introduced new payment options to the local startup, including MMBus and the food to you. So helping them to facilitate the cashless mobile transition with the customer. By giving this startup the tool they need, they are giving for them access to more than 5 million KBC pay customer instantly. There are a lot of early stage startups with a great idea, but many still need the tools and capability to refine their business model and maturity. So in many startups, they need the time to adjust and get you to the fixed structure and the process established in the largest company. That's why for KBCP, we have created the ITALI, the different division to work with our tech partner and then move faster to more agility to rolling out the service to the consumer. KBZ Pay look for the opportunity to open our API into a potential partner. So we have done with the MLBB game and also some of the music app. So that creates the win-win-win situation where we extend the range of the lifestyle to offerings for our mobile wallet and the startup gain for the wider distribution channel to reach the customer. And our customer or user, they have a gain access to the wide range of the mobile first services. Fintech is really a double-edged sword, right? If you look at Red Dot exiting Myanmar, it's really pushed down uh, consumer confidence a lot. Essentially, an uh, agent network, they do telco top-ups, a lot of things through remittance, and slowly, 
slowly somehow um, either transactions couldn't go through, call centers were not picking up the calls like they should, and overnight they just disappeared. The agents that were using Red Dot as a business wallet lost their deposits. So because of that, the Burmese tend to not trust tech so much. It, it's, it can't be helped, right? Because they, they are predominantly a cash-based economy. And, and then you have a new player like that, and then everybody is so uh, exuberant, they take on it, they take on the new tech, and they suddenly disappears overnight, right? And then they go, oh man, I should just stop the cash. So I guess, I guess that's the double-edged sword with FinTech. I think the two mi biggest misconceptions about running a FinTech in Myanmar is that number one, wallets work because everybody has a bank account and number two, everybody can download an app, which is not true. You need to think about the people that don't have enough money to even buy a smartphone, right? And then you really have to think about people who don't have access to a bank account. When we talk about FinTech specific to Myanmar, it's really about the, the inclusion angle behind it, right? Uh, I call it the inclusion ethos, right? It's not, it's not reinventing the wheel, but you can take first four applications and apply it to, to third world countries, right? So, so I think that's, that's the most important thing, the inclusive mindset. If you look at financial inclusion, right, the very first stage would be an appropriate credit assessment for the excluded, right? And you know that we can't use a payslip, we can't use a, a bank reference letter, we can't use transactions in a bank account because all these things don't exist for someone who wants to borrow money to buy a motorcycle, borrow money to build a house, right? So what other proxies can we use, right? Is it the social network? Is it what time he sleeps at night? Whether he charges his phone? This is a big industry where, where you can create an inclusive credit assessment model and still scale it across not just Myanmar, but, but the globally unbanked, right? Two billion in the world. Fortunately, this one year, especially in the last one year, 2019, we have seen a massive growth of mobile wallet. And this, this wave really brought a new energy, right? A new ecosystem to, to, to the current players, right? People are able to, con to transact more digitally, uh, payments more digitally, and the, and the coming of a new generation of mobile wallets, right? They are web app ready, easy to integrate with the current internet players. Right now, I have to say that uh, we are more optimistic right now. We can see that some of our ecosystem players, some of the companies we invested, are experiencing very, very rapid growth. I think part of the reason is that only recently, we are closing this financial inclusion gap. And this closing gap is just at the beginning, right? I believe you know, there will be more than 10 million mobile, internet, uh, mobile wallet users. Very soon, there might be 20 million mobile wallet users. And in the next five years, I think we will grow as fast as our neighbours. And surprisingly, we might even grow faster than them. And I thought that this one, two years is really the beginning of the massive digitalization of consumer in Myanmar.